Our blessed God and our Father, our hearts are so filled with gratitude. We take these moments from the depths of our hearts to say thank you for your faithfulness in as we've been ministered to. You, you not only save us, you keep us, and you satisfy us. And here at the end of this year, we look back, and there are so many different circumstances we've been through. But through it all, you've been with us, you've kept us, and you've brought us through. We thank you for everyone that is in the meeting tonight and all those that are online. I pray, Lord Jesus, make my tongue as a pen of a skillful writer, engraving the oracles of God in everyone's mind and heart for this next year, 2023. We thank you that as we cross over, there are things we are leaving behind and things that we are reaching for. We thank you we have not been this way before, but because you are the way, you said we will know the way. And we will know that which is unknown because of you, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand, take your seats. Good evening, family of God, and a warm welcome to every one of you. A warm welcome to you that is online. It's so wonderful to have you with us. Uh, Mo Ann and I have had a wonderful Christmas uh, holiday, first of all. Welcome, Michelle. We've had your Christmas service and New Year's service. And maybe we'll, you give me your thumb and I want to take your hand. And so God richly bless you. It's been so wonderful to have Jacqueline and uh, Raylene and their children and all the nephews and nieces and Rowan's mom and uh, everyone that is at home. And, and who else? And sorry, lovey, speak loud. Kyra. Welcome, Kyra, back from Cape Town. Praise God. And I hope you all had a wonderful ride in the Kumbi, blasting the, the <laughs> Michelle organized uh, uh, these Kumbis that have a party bus this afternoon to welcome her back. And my, our windows were rattling with the <laughs> music. But anyway. Uh, it was wonderful to come and find you back in church here yeah, and not gone to a disco or something. But anyway, praise the Lord. <laughs> wonderful. It's been so wonderful to have all these young people around. They keep me young. And uh, praise God. I wanted to put my best suit on tonight, the black one, a real pitch black, but it was tight around the waist. <laughs> And so I had to settle for the next best one. And this one was a bit looser. So thank you, Pastor Dale. We're looking forward to that fast. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you had a good holiday? Yeah, yeah it's been a wonderful time. And we always believe God that there is no hospital visitation, that there is no... No funerals, we don't believe in having funerals, holiday season, no tragedies, and so God has been so, so very faithful. I was so blessed this evening to see Kevin sing and Leanne and Kaylin walking in. Kevin is uh, uh, Nishi's brother, and when I was in Cape Town, uh, he had a major operation and we went to visit him in hospital and to pray for him. And he is now a walking miracle. To see him here is my miracle. Praise the Lord. Won't you just stand and stand, Kevin, stand, Leanne. We love you so much all the way from Cape Town. And, we, and Kaylin, wonderful family. Praise God. And that is uh, Benita's children. Praise the Lord. Well, we've called this year the year of the superabounding favors of God. The year of the superabounding favors of God. 
I want to read Psalm 65, verse 11, in the King James Version and in the Good News Bible. Thou crownest the year with thy, with thy goodness. That's today. There's a crown on 2022 with the goodness of the Lord. And thy parts drop fatness. The good news puts it like this. What a rich harvest of your goodness, your goodness provides. Wherever you go, there is plenty. Wherever God goes, there is plenty. Praise the Lord. I love a crossover service because it's speaking of crossing over from one dimension of time into another dimension of time. Crossing over from one dimension, from one location, into another spiritual location. Crossing over from one dimension of Christ into another dimension of Christ's life that we have not yet experienced. Crossing over from the dimension of the known into the dimension of the unknown. And that is why we've called the year 2023 the year of the divine favor of God. It is so wonderful also to have Lishen Chetty with us today. God richly bless you. You made my day, Lishen, just to see you, yeah? From Johannesburg, wonderful man, businessman, who has supported the work of God so powerfully, and that is Ronil Chetty's brother. Well, let me ask you just to stand, just a commercial break. Won't you just stand, Lishen? Wonderful young people, powerful, powerful business people. Praise the Lord. The first message that Jesus Christ preached was that he is the fulfillment of Jubilee. Jesus was teaching and preaching that Jubilee that the Jews had on their calendar, that they had to wait 50 years to experience Jubilee. And he got up and he said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. He was saying you don't have to wait 50 years anymore for you to experience Jubilee. It is now available, now fulfilled in God's prophetic agenda. And I believe that God wants each one of you to know that you don't have to wait any longer for what God has promised you. The promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And right here in the crossover service, something can happen in the realm of the spirit that the promises of God get to manifest in your life. Jesus, Luke, Dr. Luke records it in Luke 4, 16 about Jesus when he began his ministry. That's why we want to begin the year 2023 with the beginning of Jesus' ministry. It's amazing if you don't begin at the right beginning, you can miss the mark so much. So we want to start at the right starting place. Reading from verse 16, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach a gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. 
And that's what I want you to know today. That whatever you are believing God for in the word of God, this day as you cross over from one dimension, that dimension is what Christ has promised, to another dimension, what Christ has fulfilled. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Come on, everybody clap if you're clapping. Praise the Lord. Inform your hands. It's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Amplified Bible says in verse 19, to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound profusely abound this day is a scripture fulfilled where the free favors of God are profusely abounding in your life if you receive a shout hallelujah in the name of Jesus hallelujah that's why it's so important if you're available to come to a crossover service Jesus Christ said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. During this year, we studied how that the body of Christ, the many-membered body of Christ, is Christ in the earth. And Christ is the head in heaven, but he's also the body here on the earth. And so Christ is here tonight in your life and in my life. And so because Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me. We must look into the Word of God where we can make personal application. It's not enough just to know Jesus said that. But we've got to take that Word and understand that except a corn of wheat fall to the ground, it abideth alone, but if it fall to the ground and die, it brings forth much fruit. That one Christ died and many Christ, many membered body of Christ rose from the dead. So you have to embrace that word and say what Jesus said about you. You are now Jubilee. Christ fulfilled Jubilee for you to experience jubilee. And that's why we must also say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. You see, when Jesus read that in the gospels, the church was not born. The body of Christ had not come into being. It was after his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension that in the book of Acts, the church was born, the body of Christ. And so Jesus, in the Gospels, he was the body of Christ. But as you come into the book of Acts and come into the epistles, we find now that there's a harvest, and the church is the harvest, the many-membered body of Christ. And we find our identity in Christ. We make personal application of that word to our lives. Because if you don't make personal application of that word, you will be found wanting. Why the word is not working for you. It worked for Jesus. But you see, we locked into the gospels as though we are those people that are looking for to Jesus who is fulfilled Jubilee. But as you come into the book of Acts and the book of the epistles, the body of Christ is anointed to bring Jubilee to other people. Now you cannot give what you don't have. Now you must freely receive so you can freely give. It is amazing when you make that transition in the way you think and you realize if Jubilee is fulfilled, then I have Jubilee to give to others. Now, of course, you may not be fully experiencing it, but you believe it. And so you 
become the mouthpiece of God. You become Jesus' hands. You become Jesus' eyes. You become Jesus' ears. And you are called to go and meet the needs of humanity. And as you do that from a position of faith, you will find that that jubilee triggers off in your life. That is why Job was so ill with boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. But when he prayed for his friends, he was healed. Our biggest problems, we are always waiting for the right circumstances, the right people around our lives. When God has already given us his word, and when we receive that word and act on that word, the circumstances become right, and the people around us become right. Faith is a powerful force. So every one of you from this crossover message must be able to say, thank God that Jesus fulfilled Jubilee. Thank God that Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. But now it's our time. Jesus is on the throne in heaven. Jesus is in our hearts. And we are now the body of Christ and a body thou hast prepared for me, Jesus said, to do thy will, O God. So you corporately now are the body of Christ. And in your thinking, you have to transcend that old way of thinking. And understand that Jesus is not a thousand million miles away in heaven. He's right in my heart. And as he is so am I in this world. So I say to you that you must say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. That is how Jesus began his ministry and that is how you must begin 2023. You must be convinced that the spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's anointed you. We don't have time to go in, but I could share scripture upon scripture upon scripture that when you got converted and when you got filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has anointed you. So just as the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus and just as Jesus was anointed, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and he's anointed you. Now the word Christ actually means that. It's not Jesus' surname. It means the anointing of Messiah. That's what Christ means, the anointed one and his anointing. And so because you gave your life to Jesus, you become the body of the anointed one and his anointing. And so we like to put the buck off onto Jesus when we must take responsibility for our own lives and understand that greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. And we begin to do the works of God. Jesus Christ made an amazing statement. He said, the works that he did, we will do. And he says, and greater works than these because he goes to the Father. So Jesus said, we're going to do the works he did. But we're only going to be able to do it if we can believe that. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit of God. And your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is within you and within me. And we have moved away from the word impossible. Scratch out the word impossible from your dictionary. In your vocabulary, there is no impossible anymore. Because all things are possible to him who believes. Hallelujah. And you get your mind renewed that you are called to live in a possibility zone. Not in an impossibility zone. In the name of Jesus. Jesus also went on to say, 
and reading from Isaiah 61 and recorded by Luke in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Wow. So if you're anointed to preach the gospel, the good news, to the poor, surely that must mean you're not poor anymore. Because the Bible says, Jesus, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. So the word of God speaks of a transition that's taken place from poverty to rich. And if God is anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor, surely you cannot give what you don't have. It does mean in your thinking and in your believing, you are not a poor man anymore. You don't see yourself in lack, in shortage, and in sufficiency anymore. So you also need to say, I'm anointed to preach. Now you're predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. Christ is the firstborn amongst many brethren. We're speaking about crossing over from one dimension of living into another dimension of living. So Jesus read that the spirit of the Lord is upon him because he's anointed him to preach. I'm so glad that Jesus was a preacher. That means every believer is a preacher. That if you give your life to Jesus, you are called to preach. Now I thank God there are ascension gift ministries and we recognize that, but it does not mean that the believers are not preachers. And the reason you're not preaching is because you don't believe it. But as soon as you believe it, you're gonna to be touched with compassion to those that are needy, and you're gonna preach this gospel to the poor. You see, the Spirit of the Lord anoints you to do something. It's not just for good feelings. The anointing is to empower you to do something. It's in the doing that something happens. When you believe it, you will do it. If you don't do it, you don't believe it. If you don't believe it, you don't think it. But if you transcend in your thinking and believe it, you will find that you will do the word of God. And when you do the word of God, you will be blessed in all your deeds. Hallelujah. Hello, you preachers. I'm preaching to preachers today. I'm not letting you off the hook in 2023. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. It's not just a cliche because he's anointed you to preach. You are a preacher. And today, may the Holy Spirit write indelibly in your mind that you are a preacher. Say, I'm a preacher. preacher. I preach the gospel gospel. to the poor. poor. So that means I'm not poor. It's amazing when you start doing that, he is a good boss. He will pay you back beyond your wildest dreams. I mean, I know where I come from. I come from far off on the year to I mean, when we started preaching and I gave up my business because of the call of God, I became a preacher. As I began to preach, I became very, very poor. And then there was times I would preach on a Sunday morning and then we know at home there was no food to eat but I never changed the message to suit my condition. I preached the message that Jesus preached. I remember one particular Sunday after we had an amazing service that we got home and Anne only had boiled beans. 
for her and myself and our children with not even spices to put in. And we were so grateful and so on fire for God that we could eat beans on a Sunday. I still like beans, but I like it with some spices and some other things in it. But we, we lived like that. We used to find money in our post boxes. People would bring money to us. People would bring groceries to us. It was not easy because we started off rock bottom. We became poor, poor, poor. I really thought I must sell up everything to obey the Lord. At that time, I thought that I must become poor to become a minister. The call of God, I believed, was to make me poor. But I can share so many testimonies over and over again. And you'll be here till tomorrow morning of how God undertook from the most unlikely sources, from orphans, and often took an insurance policy for Ma Ann and I about 34 years ago, and it was 150,000 rand we were paid out. I received a call from Entebbe Estates. That time, 150,000 rand was a heck of a lot of money 34 years ago. He said, are you Mr. Trine? I said, yes. He said, I'm, I'm, do you, I got a, a, an insurance policy on your name, and your wife and your name, from Marlene Christmas. Uh, can I come down and meet you in Durban? Sure, I nearly fainted. I mean, we were struggling. Our lights were getting cut. We didn't have food on the table. We, we used to lay hands on empty cupboards and call food in. And, uh, you know, some people don't know what it is not to have deodorant. Some people don't even know what it is to believe God for deodorant. But we, we came through that journey where we were poorer than a church mouse, but we were preaching prosperity. And the more I preached it, the way Jesus said preach it, the more the provision came. I can truly say to you, because testimonies are wonderful, I can truly say to you, I am super wealthy. I am a multi-millionaire by the grace of God because I preached the gospel. I never preached it for price. I never preached it for gain. It's, it's amazing to be a preacher. It's amazing to be a preacher and preach what God wants you to preach. Not what's nice to people. Not what's acceptable to people. What the Spirit of God says in your heart to do it. No, I didn't do that. I didn't plan to say what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm saying they gave me one and a quarter hours to preach instead of 40 minutes. So what am I going to do? I'm going to sit and twiddle my thumbs here and not tell you some testimonies. I'm going to tell you how this thing works. It works. It works. It's very, very powerful. It works. Jesus is our jubilee. And every one of you are going to be preachers. I speak into your life that God has called you to be a preacher. I speak into your life that God has put his spirit on, upon you. And you know in your heart that you called as a businessman to preach. You know it. I'm not telling you this for the first time. You know it. But you're not doing it. And that's why it gets so hard for you. When it can become easy for you. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the Lord has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's what Jesus said. I'm anointed to heal brokenhearted people. What is a brokenhearted person? A person that's brokenhearted has got no more hope. They've been dealt vicious blows by life. Life has been cruel and harsh. And, and life is not fair, believe me. Life is not fair, but God is so good. 
There's no easy answers why some people go through what they go through. I don't have all the answers. I try to ask God to show me why some people go through such difficult, and, and I don't go through that as, as, as difficult as what they go through, what tragedy they go through. I don't go through that type of tragedy. Uh, I'm not saying because of me, it's because of this grace that I'm preaching to you. If you know how to work with the grace of God, the tragedy will be very limited. He has sent me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He's anointed you because he has sent you to do something, to heal people. You must heal people that have broken hearts. You'd be surprised how this world is filled with hearts of shattered, shattered hearts of people. Most people have got disappointing disappointments. They've been let down by husbands, let down by wives, let down by children, let down by business people, man. They, they got no more hope. They're hopeless and helpless, and God needs you to heal them. Give them hope and give them help. I'm dispensing hope to the hopeless today. If God can take a drug addict, an alcoholic, a suicidal man, a 27, save him and make him so powerful, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Most people call me dad, and yet my father died when I was seven years old. I don't even know what it is to sit on a father's lap, but supernaturally he made me a dad to his people. It's amazing what God can do. He can take you from the guttermost to the uppermost. He'll bless you beyond your wildest dreams, but you've got to know he has called you to preach and he sent you to heal. And you must heal the brokenhearted. Then he says, he's, he's also sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. Deliverance to the captives. God's de next year is a deliverance year. No more bondage, no more debt bondage, no more alcohol bondage, no more tobacco bondage. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. And he sent me also to set at liberty them that are bruised. That word bruised means those that are crushed. Do you know how many people are contemplating suicide? Even right here, there may be some suicidal cases. Do you know how many people I am counseling through that have mental illness? You'll be surprised. You see them smiling. You think they're so happy. But they're sick in the brain. They're sick in the mind. And, and you know, and we're called here to heal the crushed people. Deliver the captives, set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the year when God's favors profusely abound. So I still got 15 minutes. You're coming up, you got something to do before the meeting closed? Or you gave me the time. You don't give a preacher time and you want to take it back. Because I got to prophesy on you. And I cannot prophesy on you before 12 o'clock. Because you're not crossing over at quarter to 12. I think I've preached better than you are clapping. I've preached better. I'm preaching my heart out to you. I'm, I'm sharing with you the truth of the gospel. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now the acceptable year of the Lord uh, is a day when Jubilee took place. Jubilee Israel waited 50 years for Jubilee. There were some characteristics around Jubilee. On the 39th year, 49th year, there was a blowing of trumpets. The blowing of trumpets preceded Jubilee. And it was a proclamation that Jubilee is upon us. I'm here proclaiming to you that Jubilee is upon you in 2023. The characteristics around Jubilee, not only was a blowing of trumpets, but slaves were set free. Three, debts were canceled. 
Some of you are sinking in debt. Some of you are living on two months debt before you even get your salary. You're applying for second bonds and third bonds and getting more credit cards. And yet the Bible says, oh, no man anything except to love one another. That's the only debt we have is to love people. It's amazing when you start living by the word of God. How wonderful life is, but you're going to have to do it. I kind of feel I'm going to make an altar call and all of you are going to come up to the front. But I won't do it. It's too many of you. Because there's hardly anybody that don't need what I'm preaching to right now. How many of you don't need any more money? Raise your hand. Come on. You don't need any more money. Raise your hand. Out of a couple hundred people, not one person in this auditorium doesn't need any more money. Not one person. So you think, I didn't hear God when I must preach to you how to get more money? (laughs) I'm preaching for you to get more money. Because you want more money. There's nobody that doesn't want more money. But God wants to give you more money. But you're going to have to come God's way. You're going to have to do it God's way. And so your debts must get canceled 2023. Supernatural debt cancellation. I speak over your life. Supernatural and anointing to cancel your debt. To pay up your credit cards. To pay your bonds off in the name of Jesus. And cash is king. You work by cash. You work by surplus. The anointing will make you wealthy to work by surplus. In the name of Jesus. If you receive it, shout amen. I receive it. I receive it. In the name of Jesus, I receive it. God's going to give you houses that you've never built. God gave me a house that I never built. Filled with goodly things. All these wealthy people, man. Beautiful houses. I used to drive past the house that I used to live in. And wonder what type of people live in such mansions. And today I'm living in it as mine. I've got a new name in glory and it's mine. I know the author of the story and he's mine. And I got a home and it's mine. (laughs) Oh Jesus man. I'm bragging on my God. My God is so wonderful. In the name of Jesus 2023 you're going to serve God properly. No more fooling around, no more playing games, no more staying at home when you should be in church. You're going to serve God properly. I'm speaking to you, you're going to serve God properly. You're working too much by the sweat of your brow. You don't have to work harder, you'll work easier. You'll be more joyful in what you do when the anointing is working in your life. And so this jubilee anointing has to do with the grace of God. The grace of God. So what is the grace of God? The grace of God is undeserved favor. What must you do to get grace? Stop trying to earn it. Too many people try to earn it by living goody-goody lives. It doesn't mean you mustn't live a goody-goody life, but it's grace, it's undeserved merit. Grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. Christ paid the price for you to have favor. And all he wants you to do is to believe him and let that grace. I got about five, six points. I'm going to read them out to you. And on minutes, how do I get more grace? How is this grace going to be unleashed in my life? In 2023, number one, grace and superabounding favor comes from Jesus Christ. You've got to understand who is the source of this grace. It's favor. Favor is not fair. Believe me, it's not fair. There are plenty of preachers that preach better than me, but are poor, so poor. 
pastor from Cape Town phoned me this evening. You should watch a program at six o'clock. And he said, I just want to tell you, you just don't know how many apostles and pastors you are blessing across the globe. I just want to thank you. It comes from favor. I release an anointing of favor for 2023 on your life. Where doors that were closed will become open. Things that were hard will become easy. And you will flow instead of climbing. There's something about being a river person. It's just stop resisting because what you resist persists. Just learn to flow with the flow. Just move with the flow. And you know, it doesn't mean you're moving into negative. Just, you know, just flow. Have a river heart that just can flow instead of a climbing mountain heart. Climbing too much, hard, struggling when the grace of God is here to help you to flow. It comes from Jesus Christ. The grace and superabounding favor is received from the knowledge of God. What I'm preaching to you is knowledge. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. So when I preach to you under the anointing, I'm giving you pictures how you can become a multimillionaire. Life would be better for you if you're a multimillionaire. Believe me. Much better. Much, much, much bit better. Much, 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 much better. Much better if you're a millionaire. <laughs> What do you think, Pastor Pumalila? Will life be better for you? I know the man you're sitting next to is a multi, multi-millionaire, but nevertheless, life is much better, much better. It comes from the knowledge of God. Number three, the grace of God and the superabounding favor from God comes through your giving. There is a grace of giving. The more you give, the more grace abounds to you. It just works like that. The first harvest you get from your giving is grace. It's favor. You have favor. I mean, I didn't have to do anything for someone to give me 100,000 rand before a service. I didn't have to do anything. I never even tell them my needs. I don't tell nobody my needs. How come they didn't give you and they gave me? It's called favor. It's called grace. I'm oozing with it. It's so full. It's, it's, it's coming out of my, my, my skin. It's full of grace. It comes from your giving. The more you give, the more grace you will have till all grace abounds towards you. Number four, grace and superabounding favor of God comes through prayer and fasting. You're going to be here every night for the prayer meetings. In fact, I want to have them in a restaurant because the first 20 minutes, I'm going to empower you for success. And then the next half an hour, we're going to pray for you. We're going to set it up with chairs and tables. And I'm going to empower you for 14 days how to be successful in 2023. And that's what's going to happen. Then you pray that comes through fasting and prayer. Number five, grace and superabounding favor comes through humility. Get off your high horse. Bible is very clear, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, but he give grace to the humble. The more you humble yourself. Don't try to lift your nose in the air. Don't try it because you got blessed now. It's like me. I, I, look at me, what I done. No, it's what God done. There's no self-made millionaires. There's no self-made billionaires. God can pull a rug off from under your carpet anytime. I, I heard, I watched a boxing match. And uh, this boxer said, if you give God the glory, he'll give you the victory. I said, God, what a profound statement. If you give God the glory, he give you the victory. He just won the world title. He had lost it, and now he won it back. Grace comes, favor comes through humility. And grace and superabounding favor 
comes through the revelation of God's word. And it's one minute to 12. Will you stand? And I'm going to prophesy. And the time has come for you to cross over. Have you received the word of God? Have you received the word of God? If you received it, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say amen. Amen. Say that's my man of God. You cannot receive the word unless you receive me. You cannot receive the anointing on my life unless you receive me. Jesus taught that. The measure that you receive your man of God is a measure that you'll receive revelation and the measure that you receive anointing. Because I'm a messenger of God. I've been doing this now for 46 years. It's a long time to be doing something for 46 years. Uh, uh, By the grace of God, I believe I'm a specialist. Very, very big specialist, especially in faith and money matters. Very big specialist in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand. Let me speak anointed words into your life. In Jesus' name, I release the wisdom of God upon you to appropriate the favor of God for your life. The favor of God for your family. The favor of God for your business. The favor of God for your work. To superabound God's goodness being manifested to you and through you. It takes the wisdom of God to work this favor into your life and your business. I decree over your life and over your family life. New mercies. New mercies every day. New grace. New blessings. New victories. New prosperity blessings. New streams of income. New. Better. Bigger. More powerful anointings. New dimensions of glory manifestations of grace being manifested to you, your families, and all those that are in your circle of influence. Health spring up speedily upon you. New doors of opportunities be open to you in Jesus' name. For 2023, everything new for this new year. New, new, new. I speak the word new that is engraved on your heart, engraved on your mind. Something new is in store for you. The old has gone. The new has come in Jesus' name. The King of glory has risen upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you and through you in 2023. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. I decree over your life today that as we cross over, King Jesus has entered into your 2023 and he is the Lord of war. The battle is the Lord's through your life and the victory is yours. Give him a big shout, the King of glory. The gates and the doors have been lifted up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
thank you tonight for the word we've received. Yeah. It's a word that has crossed us over Woo. into 2023. We thank you. This is our time. This yeah. is our season. This is our year. Woo. The year of the divine favor of God. And we're going to be all that you've called us to be. Do all that you've called us to do. Have what we've never had before. Yeah. In Jesus' name. And the family of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, family, on behalf of Dad and my Ann. Happy New Year and welcome to your favor, your year of the divine favor of God. God bless you and your family. Amen.